and uh, he did not want to do that. He felt very uncomfortable about that, and uh, off he is uh, seeking to uh, redeem his honor and show and show somebody something. So the I'll show you, folks, is a maladjusted coping mode. It must be uh, it must be interrupted and ultimately relinquished for us to feel better. So I am uh, at this point discussing what the nature of the problem is. What the nature of the problem is. Uh, again, we are talking not about you as much as we're talking about the processes of nature itself. We are nature. And our social anxiety is forming in an, in, through the natural progression of nature. Uh, the, the same thing that helped us to evolve and survive is what is uh, occurring for us now uh, with our social anxiety. We're getting a mix, uh, a signal, a threat. We're being threatened and uh, it is uh, an inappropriate threat. There actually is uh, no danger. Uh, the danger, of course, is humiliation uh, that we are trying to avoid. Uh, however, folks, we need to awaken to the fact that the humiliation is a memory. That the shame is not a possibility in the current, but a memory from the past, haunting us. And we are subject to some perceptual distortions. In other words, we can confuse a feeling for a fact. What happens is, say for example, your insecurity comes up, from your history, a memory uh, of, uh, of being uh, diminished, of being uh, somehow seen as inadequate. You have that feeling, you don't realize it's a memory and you look around for you, uh, around and it tries to justify itself. Well, why am I feeling this way? Oh, I see, that's right. I'm really not as tall as uh, she is. So I'm quite short, you know, and I'm sort of plumpy and, you know, I really don't. And boom, oh, you're on your way justifying a feeling. And that feeling is not a fact, but we can see, we can see that a feeling can actually precede or precede a fact because it seeks to justify itself. And that is what a schema does. A schema is a belief that is self-fulfilling. It will begin to organize your personal reality if you do not apprehend that it is a memory. And hopefully, with, uh, uh, if you have a healthy parent modality, you can reflect on your inner child recognizing its suffering and uh, separating yourself from it and seeing what you're experiencing as a triggered memory. And uh, indeed, you know, when we have these things occur, we regress a little bit and our resources uh, are become limited. We, we enter the child state. Uh, so, I mean, we have to develop our insight and awaken to the fact that these mental events are occurring. However, they must remain mental events and we must not confuse them with reality. How do we do that? How do we distance ourselves? How do we create psychological distance from a mental event, a triggered schema, the triggered sense of shame, for example, or humiliation, the triggered sense of humiliation without letting it threaten us? How do we do it? Mindfulness. The answer is mindfulness. Mindfulness decenters us. That means we do not take the event personally. We can be the witness of it. We are still and steady while something passes our mind. We need to Adjust our values, folks, to do that. Because when you're very invested 
in being someone. It's going to be very hard to prevent uh, the threat uh, from, from organizing your, your life. And uh, we do need to talk about the healing process because the healing process is a process that's very similar to becoming more enlightened. More enlightened means less egoistic, not because it's the right thing to do, because it's the truth of the matter, uh, that we are not uh, our self-conceptions. Yeah, we are the witness, and we are creating these constructs and living through them, and uh, however, uh, we are whole and complete without them. And that's mindfulness. Mindfulness, meditation, folks, let's go. We let go of all conceptualizing. And we then are able to see mental events, feelings, sensations, and thoughts as objects. You can see them. And there it goes, my defectiveness schema. Oh, there goes the fantasy. I'm talking about how many push-ups I can do. Oh, there it goes. I'm really looking good. And, and we begin to observe this. What am I doing? What am I doing? This is what is sustaining my social anxiety. So social anxiety, when we define it, uh, the DSM-4, you know, the diagnostic manual, defines it as uh, in terms of uh, folks coming into a social situation where they're afraid of being appraised. The thing about that uh, is that uh, Social anxiety is sustained uh, in the private moments of our life. You heal up not on the stage, a social stage. You heal up in the morning, in the quiet hours that you are with yourself and you're watching your fantasies because we must interrupt looking good. We must interrupt being impressive. We must uh, interrupt uh, redeeming honor. We need to interrupt. Uh, approval seeking. Not when folks are there, but in our minds. And you're going to get better. You're going to feel better just as I have. It's tricky because when you feel inferior, you think you're fixing it by becoming superior. When you feel you're, 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 you might be rejected, you're fixing it by getting approval and getting people to, to like you. We, you know, uh, you can become very seductive. And you still got your social anxiety. Meanwhile, everyone's fallen over for you. You can't get rid of this insidious sense that there's something wrong with you. That you're insufficient. And folks, you're distracted. You need to honor yourself. What's happening is that thing is impoverishing you also. That's why you need to divest from it. 